Joshua. Back in the Old Testament. If you understand your Bible much, the book of Joshua, the, the word name Joshua is the same as the word New Testament Jesus. Joshua, Jehovah saves is what it means. And that's why it's even used interchangeably there in Acts chapter 7 in your King James Bible, and it's supposed to be that way. And this morning, we'll read the story of Joshua. Joshua led the children of Israel where Moses couldn't lead them. Moses, the law can only get you so far. The law got them to the river, but Joshua will take them over the river. Now, the law is our schoolmaster that brings us to Christ. And Christ is the one that gets you over the river. And so the book of Joshua this morning is a great, great uh, book in the Bible. Joshua chapter 2. I'm going to tell you a story this morning, and you listen carefully. Joshua chapter number 2, verse number 1. And Joshua the son of Nun, somebody said that means he didn't have no parents, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into an harlot house named Rahab and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they be come to search out all the country. And the woman took the two men and hid them and said thus, There came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. And uh, look on down there at verse number 9. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Verse 12. Now therefore I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that ye will also show kindness unto my father's house, and give me a token. Verse 21. And she said, According to your words, so be it. And she sent them away, and they departed. And she bound the scarlet line in the window, that scarlet thread, a cord, like a rope, in her window. Now look at chapter 6. Turn over to chapter 6 and verse 17. Chapter 6 and verse 17. And the city shall be accursed, even it, and all that are therein, to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. Verse 25, after the walls fell down flat. Verse 25, and Joshua saved Rahab. Isn't that something? Remember, Joshua was a picture of Jesus Christ. And Joshua saved Rahab, the harlot, alive, and her father's household, and all that she had. And she dwelleth in Israel even unto this day, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. I want to preach this morning on the subject, a crimson sinner and a scarlet thread. The thought verse would be Isaiah 1 and verse 18. Come now. Let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as wool. And though they be red like crimson, they shall be as white as snow or wool. God this morning has given us a lesson. The background here is Moses had died. Joshua had led the people out of, uh, uh, over across the river Jordan and to spy out the country of Jericho. Now the story here goes, they come up against this big city called Jericho. Jericho had a great big wall around the city, and they were going to try to fight it and overtake it. So Joshua calls these men together, and he said, now look, he said, that's a big city over there. If we're going to whip that crowd over there, you guys go over there and check it out, find out where their weak spots are, find out where their strong points are, come back and bring us word, and then we'll overtake the city. So these spies go into the city, they come in here, and for some reason or another, they run across this woman who, who was a harlot. She was a prostitute. And she was there, and the Bible said that she took these men in 
and hid them. The king found out they was there. And the king said, hey, I'm going to kill them guys. I want them out of my sight. I don't want them in our city spying around. Go kill them. He said, somebody said there's over at the harlot's house. Let's go find them. So they, they went over there. And, she, and, and they said, where's them men out? And she hid those men. Now Rahab knew that God was going to let them people take over that city. And she said, I know God's going to let y'all do it. She said, I know we're goners. Y'all are going to run over us like we're not even here. Uh, we're going to die. And she said, uh, will you please have mercy on me and my family? So he said, i tell you what you'll do. We'll do. You hide us. And keep us away from that man. And she took a, a scarlet cord like a rope, let them guys over the wall, and they escaped. And they said, I'm tell you what you're going to do, sis. said, you put this scarlet cord in your window. And when we come back to destroy this city, when we see that cord, we won't touch you or your household. And she was saved and spared because of that deed. A crimson sinner and a scarlet thread. Now, I want to say a few things about this this morning. This story deals with Rahab the harlot. And the first thing I want to talk about is her degraded condition that she was in. Her terrible past. I mean, this woman had a past. You know, a lot of people think somebody with a past can't never do nothing for God. But the truth is, this morning, we've all got a past. And thank God the past is the past. Amen? Thank God. She had a past. She had a reputation, you might say. I mean, everybody in town, they said, there's the harlot. There's the harlot Rahab. Back in those days, they even had, they had clothes that identified them as a harlot. Uh, nowadays, half the girls walking up down the street look like one. But, uh, but uh, they, back in those days, only harlots dressed like harlots. Now, girls that do the regular clothes look like harlots. Amen? That's right. And if you're not a harlot, don't dress like a harlot. But anyway, anyway, you know, that's like the old preacher said, if it ain't for sale, don't advertise it. Uh, but anyway, I wasn't planning on saying that. But she had a past. She had a past. That woman had a past. And uh, uh, she, she had a terrible, terrible past. She had a wicked past. She had lived a wicked life. She had been, uh, took what God had given her and sold in the hands of sinful and lust, lustful men. Her name stayed with her. When people saw her, they said, there's the harlot. There's the harlot. Don't want you girls hanging around her. She's a wicked woman. But it was awful. Not only that, her terrible position. She was in trouble. She was soon to be destroyed by God's power. She was in trouble. She lived in that city, Jericho, and it was only days, if not hours, that God was going to destroy her city. She, didn't, uh, she had no idea at first the danger that she was in. She had a past. She had a position that she was in terrible trouble. But not only that, brother, uh, she, she, would, she was doomed for sure. Her house was on the wall. You know that wall, the famous, you know, that Joshua fit the battle of Jericho and they walked around, marched around there and the walls fell. Her house was on that wall. She was doomed. She was doomed. She was marked for destruction. She was in trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say this morning, without the blood of Jesus over you, without the protecting hand over you, you are marked for destruction. It's only going to be a matter of time till God wipes you off the face of the earth. It's only going to be a matter of time till God destroys this world. If you're not under the blood, like he said a while ago in his testimony, if you don't say, Lord, I want you to be my Savior, you're in trouble. You're in a terrible position. But secondly, this morning, notice her dramatic conversion. I mean, she got saved. You say, Brother Danny, can God save a woman like that? Yes, He can. Thank God. Listen, you may be here this morning and you may have the worst past of anybody in the country. You better watch out for these religious people that look down on people with a past. They're like, oh my goodness, I don't want trash like that coming in our good church. I'm going to tell you, sometimes God looks at you and goes, ah, like that right there. I'm telling you, Brother, they ain't none of us no better than nobody else. Uh, we all deserve to go to hell. I mean, if God know, if God knows our sins, and every person in here today has the wrath of God abiding on us, except for the grace of God. 
And I'm going to tell you this morning, brother, uh, she had a conversion. She got scared. In chapter 2 and verse 11, she was afraid that God was going to destroy her and her family. She knew He could. Charlie mentioned a minute ago, he said, I got scared. That's good. I got scared. I remember when I got scared. I remember when I was scared, I was going to hell. My mom sitting back there this morning. Her and my aunt used to sing when I was little. And I'd go through the house, and I was about that tall. And they'd sing in there, and they'd sing, Lord, oh Lord, I want to go to heaven. Hell is an awful, awful place. And I remember when I was little, I was scared of going to hell. When I was growing up, I was scared of going to hell. You know what that book said? That book said, by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. And what's wrong with our generation now? People ain't scared of God no more. Amen? People just live in the old way. They're not scared of God. Let me tell you something this morning, buddy. He can unplug you anytime He chooses. He can turn your heart off and it'll quit beating. Just like I can turn that light switch off and that light will go off. God can take your life. You better fear God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And Rahab feared God. She knew that she was in trouble. She said, I'm, I'm scared. She said, I know I'm a wicked person. I know I'm a low-down dog. And I'm scared God's going to destroy the city. God's going to destroy my house. God's, that's a good shape to be in. I'm telling you, she had her facts together. She heard what the Lord had done for Israel before. Somehow or another, this old girl had heard some Bible. She said, I heard the Lord drive up the Red Sea for you guys. We done heard about that here in Jericho. Talks all over the country what your God did for you. She said, we heard that you was up against the Red Sea and God raised up the waters and parted them and drowned Pharaoh and his army. We ain't messing with you. I mean, we're scared of you. We're scared of your God. We're afraid of your God. And what he did to the kings of the Amorites. How you, how you they cut their toes off and everything else. Hung them up by their toes and upside down beheaded them. I mean, she had some uh, facts. And then she had some faith. I want you to notice that Rahab had a remarkable understanding of the sovereignty of God. She said, I know that the Lord hath given you the land. Somehow or another, that woman knew. She said, I, I just know you're, you're, that God's going to give you this land. That God, isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing that some people that live like the devil and, and come to God and they can get a hold of more spiritual truth than some of these goody-goody people that ain't never done nothing wrong or right. I mean, she knew that God had gave them that land. She said, God's gave it to you. God's gave it to you. God's gave it to you. Notice thirdly, her daring confession. She had a confession toward God. She said, looky here. She said, are you going to spare me? She said, will you spare me? And these guys said, now look. She said, do you take care of us? We'll take care of you. So she said, come on up here. She took them up in the attic. And she hid them up there, and she hid these guys up there, and she said, look, they're going to come looking for you. It wasn't just a few minutes, somebody beating on the door. You got them spies in here? She said, there ain't no spies in here. There's hid up on the roof. Said, Bring them spies out. We're going to kill them. She said, there ain't no spies in here. And when they got gone, she took that scarlet cord, that red. Scarlet's like that color right there, dark, dark red, almost burgundy. It's the color of blood. Don't forget that. It wasn't a yellow cord. It wasn't a blue cord. The color of heaven. It wasn't, a, I don't know what the color of yellow is, chicken or the sun or something. Uh, listen, uh, it, it wasn't an orange cord. I mean, it wasn't a, a black cord. It wasn't a white cord. It was a scarlet cord. The color of that right there. And boy, she took them and let them down like that. And they said, I'm going to tell you what you're going to do, sister. So they said, it ain't going to be long till we're going to come in here and we're going to wipe this city out tear it all to pieces. There ain't going to be nobody left, man, woman, child. God said kill every one of them. But I tell you what we'll do. If you'll take that cord, or that scarlet cord, and you'll hang that thing out your window, and when, you, when we see that cord hanging out your window, we'll spare you and your house. Ladies and gentlemen, they didn't look, they didn't look, they didn't come into Jericho saying, well, now where's the good people? They didn't come into Jericho saying, now there's a Sunday school teacher. They didn't come into Sunday school saying, well, there's a harlot, don't mess with her. I'm telling you, they was looking for one thing. All they was looking for was that little cord hanging out that window. I'm telling you what, brother, listen, if you're saved by the grace of God, that ought to stir something down deep in your soul. 
Can I tell you something this morning? Old brother Danny here, you know a lot of people say, Danny Castle don't deserve to preach. You're right, I don't. You say, he don't deserve to go to heaven. You're right, I don't. I'm telling you, I don't deserve it, but I'm going. I'm going to heaven. And you know why I'm going? Because when I was 18 years old, I took that little scarlet thread. That's the blood of Jesus. I hung that thing on my window. And when the Lord comes over one of these days, brother, all he's looking for is that scarlet cord, that scarlet line. Amen. I got ahead of myself there a little bit, but oh Lord have mercy, I'm about to blow up when I think about that. It's the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. It's the blood that maketh an atonement. Let me ask you something this morning. Y'all, hush just a second. Let me ask you a question this morning. You're about to shout me out here to where I can't even hear myself. I love it. Yeah, but I want to tell you something right quick. Has it ever dawned on you that God don't accept you because of your goodness? God don't accept you because of nothing you've done, nothing you ever have done, nothing you ever will do, but God accepts you on the merits and the basis of the blood of Jesus Christ and Him only is where God accepts you. And if I'd ever get a hold of you, you'd get some of what they got. Now these people say, well, I'm trying to live the best I can so God will accept me. You're going to be miserable all your life because you don't ever know if you've lived good enough. I done gave up. I know I ain't lived good enough. I'm going in on a free ticket. I'm going in on something somebody else has done paid for me. I couldn't pay for it myself. He had to pay it for me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We ought to just stop and shout a while. Woo! Amen. You know what somebody said? They said, they said, golly. said, this is a crazy wild church, ain't it? I don't see nobody asleep. I don't see nobody asleep. Let me see if I can see anybody asleep. Not one person. Amen. Well, anyway, she took that thing. She hung up at that, in that window. And buddy, it wasn't long till here they come. Here come, here come Israel. Here come my arm. I'm telling you, buddy, I wouldn't want to be in their way. When God was with the armies of Israel, by the way, this is not in the message, but God is still with Israel. And if America ever turns our back on Israel, we're hurting, but God has blessed America for one reason, because our president has always believed that when in a conflict, we take Israel's side. And God told Abraham, I'll bless them that bless you, I'll curse them that curse you. And you know how come them crazy people in Iraq and Afghanistan and all them other places? Because God's put the curse on them, they're against His people. That's their half-brothers, half-breed brothers. Those people like Saddam Hussein and... Bin Laden and all them people. Listen, if they gas wouldn't be so high out there right now, if if it wasn't for that bunch of nuts like that. Of course, we got plenty in Alaska, but we won't get into that right now. Uh, I think we're all out of protest, amen. Uh, but but anyway, anyway, I tell you, it wasn't long to the time. Here come them armies of Israel, and armies of Israel come across there and they said, "We're going to tear this city apart." And buddy, I'm telling you, they come across there and they said, uh, uh, we're going to bomb this place. We're going to put them scud missiles. They didn't have them, but you know, they had whatever they had. And God told them this. You know how God told them to get around Jericho? He said, march. And when they marched around that city the last time, the walls, the power of God, knocked the walls down. They didn't fire a shot. They didn't shoot a slingshot, throw a rock. Somebody tell me how many times they marched around Jericho. Wrong. Thirteen. I heard a few people say it. That's in all the songs and stuff. But God said march one time a day for six days. They ran around Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then what did He say on the seventh day? March seven times. Thirteen times. Thirteen trips they made around the city of Jericho. And they marched. And they marched. And they marched. He said, well, what else do, Lord? Just march. But Lord, we're not getting much done like this. Don't you worry about it. You just march. They went around there. You're going to have to watch me do this 13 times. And uh, they marched around. I think I'll go the other way. Uh, that, no, they, didn't. They, just went, they just went to marching. And they marched. 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 And the people out there in Jericho said, 
Look at them idiots out there. That ain't doing no good. Look at them crazy people out there marching. They, but son, I'm telling you, on that seventh day, that thirteenth time, them walls started a shaking and fell down, and they come in there and they killed everything. And when they come to that house, they said, "Don't touch that one." And the Bible said Joshua spared and saved Rahab. What a picture. I'm going to show you one more thing and I'll be through. Her deified connection. Let me show you something in the Bible. Take your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 1 just a second. Did you know what happened? Now, Brother Derek preached in Sunday school this morning about forgiveness. That was a tremendous introduction for this message this morning. You think God don't forgive you? There's some of you people sitting right here this morning. You've got a terrible past. And, you, and the devil beats you up with it all the time. He does me, mine. He'll bring up stuff. That have, or some old wicked Christian will bring something up or something. And it hurts when people bring up your past. But I'm going to tell you something. When God, look what God done to Rahab. You say, preacher, did Rahab was her, you said a deified connection. That's right. Rahab physically was connected right in the line of birth of Jesus Christ. He said, I don't believe it. I'll show you in the Bible. You think God didn't forgive this woman and save her? Look at chapter Matthew 1. Now, if a man had wrote the Bible, he'd have never put a harlot in the ancestry of Jesus Christ. It would have been Mother Teresa and Mother this and Mama that and all the way back down there. That's the way we'd have made it. But God put Rahab in there. Let me tell you something. I don't care if you've been the biggest harlot in Burke County. If you've been forgiven, washed in the blood of Jesus, you're just as clean and white as, as Mother Teresa, brother of the Virgin Mary. You say, ah, they're marked for life. Maybe in your eyes, but God took it away. Matthew chapter 1, verse 5. And Solomon, that's Solomon, Boaz, Booz, that's Boaz. <laughs> His name was Booz. <laughs> that's Boaz in the Old Testament. Of a Rahab, that's Rahab the harlot. That's the Greek word, the Hebrew word back there is uh, Rahab, spelled Rachab here, same person. You say, how do you know, preacher? Look over in uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. And in Hebrews chapter 11, God gave that great uh, uh, list of those that were saved by faith in the Old Testament. And he names Noah, and he names Abraham, and he names all the great people in the Bible, Samson, that had great and wonderful faith. And guess who shows up? I mean, Daniel and all them guys in the New Testament, in the Old Testament, you'd think God would have had the greatest saints in there. Guess who shows up in Hebrews 11? Look at verse 31. By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. Rahab the harlot got named by God in the hallway of faith, brother, in the human uh, line of faith, the hall of fame. And the Old Testament up shows Rahab, a crimson sinner and a scarlet thread. The thought of the message is this morning, she's listed in the Hall of Fame. You know who's not listed? Elijah, Elisha, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel is not in Hebrews 11. Rahab is. God don't look at things. The way we look at it. If you're here this morning and you put your faith and trust in the blood of Jesus. When God sees you, He sees the blood of the Lamb. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's the good news. I heard that story and I'll tell you this and I'm through. That little boy is over in Scotland Yard, you know, and they... A little rich kid, like a little prince. And he's sitting in the back of that limousine. And one day he's watching the guards out there in Scotland Yards in front of Buckingham Palace or wherever it is over there, march back and forth. And he said, Mama, I thought the guards wore red uniforms, Mama. She said, They do, son. She said, He said, Well, the day they ain't got on, look, they got on white. She said, Oh, no, son. They got their red uniform on. He said, no, Mama, they got on white today. She said, no, son, they have on their red uniforms. 
And he was sitting in the back of that big long limousine and it had red tinted glass. And did you know what? When you look at something that's red through a red tinted glass, guess what? It's white. Try it. And that little boy said, it's white, mama. And you know what? This world's out there saying, I see your sins. I see your sins. I see your sins. You're just an old crimson sinner. God says, no, they're white. And the world said, "Uh uh-uh, I saw what they done. I saw they're wicked. They're low down. And God says, "Uh uh-uh. Because when you look at a wicked crimson sinner through the blood of Jesus, they're white as snow. That's what the book said. Isaiah 118. We can leave here rejoicing this morning. We can leave here shouting this morning. We can walk out that door saying hallelujah, hallelujah for the blood of the Lamb. Praise God. A crimson sinner and a scarlet thread. I ask you a question this morning. Somebody sitting here this morning and you feel terrible. You feel guilty about your past. If you will get out of your seat, kneel right down here at this altar and say, God, I'm a sinner. And I know Jesus Christ paid the price for me, shed His blood for my sins. When He sees you, from then on, He sees you as worthy and not as you are. Will you let Him help you this morning? You, want, you say, I'd give anything in the world to feel like some of these people in here feel this morning, preacher. I'd give anything in the world to have that peace, to know that I'm going to heaven. When I, well, here's how you do it. I'm telling you, I have been down this road a long time. You'll beat yourself to death trying to be good enough for God to accept you. You'll drive yourself cra- I know people drive themselves crazy because they can't quit this or can't quit thinking that or I thought this bad or I felt like this. Oh, God, listen, brother, you might as well just say, if, look, if you could do it all, he wouldn't have died on the cross. He wouldn't have died on the cross if you was good enough or even could be good enough. If you'll make up your mind, hey, I'm trusting in him. Just like I'm, just like I'm trusting this chair to hold me up. See, I'm trusting in that chair. That's the way you trust Jesus Christ with your soul, and you'll be able to shout when you go out that door. I was a crimson sinner. Thank God for the scarlet thread. Let's stand by our heads for prayer.